Hey, buddies, Potato Big Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI, where we're playing a Portugal Maritime modded gameplay. If you want to play with these mods, do go ahead and check out the link in the description. And if you are a Patreon supporter, you also get access to my save files, so you can check out this game as well. Now, Grand Colombia is over here, and I think I had planned to declare war on him because his empire is very coastal and very pillageable. So I will vote up that emergency, and maybe I should have voted it up more. I kind of wanted to save my Diplo favor to sell to the AI or use in a more important thing. Not particularly important, but I do want to get value from this ability right here. All units pillaging improvements earn double yields, and all my naval units gain the ability to perform coastal pillages. Oh, locked in the atomic era reveals treasure trove resource, which can be harvested by your units for a large amount of gold. Very cool, very interesting. I am gonna grab a Mani and I'm gonna plug her into Kumasi because that's where like the vast majority of my culture is coming from. And it'll take her five turns to get established there. We'll probably plug an envoy in there too. Uh, we have entered into the industrial era. And we are on a golden age. And I do think reform the coinage is the play here. Plus three gold per specialty district in the foreign city is a lot of money for us. So I'm going to take that. I could go for two arms. I think I like reform the coinage. Speaking of which, we did just get another trader. And uh, my game actually lags a little bit when I click on a trader sometimes, which is kind of fun. Let's buy ourselves a settler here. There's an island over here with some strategics we could nab. So I'm thinking of settling on the coal. There is something to be said to settle elsewhere. But yeah, I think on the coal grabs us all of the land tiles nearby. So we'll settle on that coal. And in Amanda Lashua, we have the harbor. We have the waterfront. It might be worth us to think about the um, to think about the campus. I will go ahead and grab that campus. It's worth quite a bit of science. And we can continue to develop that science as the game goes on. In Pete, in Pete, we have not yet built our naval buildings. So I'm trying to think like probably the campus is going there. This could be a decent waterfront right there. It has a reef. I could put the harbor over on this side and then we can kind of think about maybe we put a district right here, but we can play around with things. I think this looks pretty reasonable to me. Let's get started with that harbor. It will take a while to build. I will gold purchase a builder just to continue to develop the city. There's a couple of tiles in here I can chop and there's a couple of tiles I can improve. I believe we're missing a settler down here for the city of Nubal. So we will go ahead and buy our settler. So for settling here, it might be worth our while to consider settling a city somewhere over here as well. There's also like a fairly okay city right here on this peninsula that captures quite a lot of coastal fish value. So I'll pop a city center icon there. We may not settle all of these cities. That's the thing. It may not be the case that we settle them all, but at the very least we should consider a lot of these. All right, boom, there's a plantation. We get sugar online in that city and the dragon's hoard has gotten us a free trader, which is excellent. Now I have a couple of nows here. Let's go ahead and pop forward and see if we can't deal with this. And I should and will start moving any boats I can find towards the territory of Gran Colombia. We go ahead and open up the unit list. It's actually, rarely do I find this useful, but there are like specific scenarios in which I can get a use out of it. Part of the problem right now is we don't have any niter, so I will go ahead and buy these luxuries uh, because it'll boost my amenities. But what I really want is some niter, if anyone has it, and nobody seems to have spare. Okay, my boats are moving this way now. Right, okay, I have the majority of my boats heading in the right direction. Oh, trading with Kalania is actually quite powerful from here. Um, so I will. Wesley Clausen. Got yourself a very nice thing. We are waiting for Horatio Nelson to build the, the shipyard in this city once it finishes that. But look, look at this productivity on these cities, man. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, I've totally decided to pivot away from tourism as a goal. I, I think that's, I honestly, I think it's the right choice. It's a more interesting choice to go for the science victory. We've done a lot of culture victories lately. I'm thinking I might do like a Diplo victory soon. Although to be honest with you, you kind of just play the victory that presents itself based on the game that you're playing. And this game felt like a culture game, but I didn't want to do a culture game. So I pivoted to something similar that I could get away with. Nice, right, so we've got the waterfront in Drove. Could grab that breakwater. I may purchase the breakwater and the boardwalk in here just to accelerate the city's um, yields. And I will really quickly grab myself a water park. Although I may also grab a couple of nows because we do have press gangs plugged in. And eventually I won't be able to build these anymore. So the sooner I get them in, the better. Oh, well, that's bad. That sucks. I was going to settle this island, but it looks like Hungary just sniped it off me. I mean, I can't be super mad about it. I did take my time. 
I will settle this right here though, because this is a good fishing location. Let's go ahead and purchase a settler to go do that. Oh man, look at that gold from Kalania, 60 gold. We are going to take that. I'm going to be just going by best gold from basically from now on, because I don't really care about anything else. We are getting the kill bot, which would be nice um, once it's all finished up. I'd probably do with another settler in here and shunt it on over to this location here as well. All right, let's plant some more woods. We're harvesting the maize so that we can place more woods and get lumber mills because lumber mills are better than farms, in my opinion, particularly when we're benefiting from a lot of a food that's coming from coastal stuff. Campus, Harbor, Theater Square and Waterfront finished in Orion Henry. We could look to produce a lot of production in here if we wanted to go that direction. We could also go water park. We could build something like the Crystal Red and Tor. Unfortunately, I can't build that in my capital. Let me have a look around and see what my best city for building that is. Anything under 30 turns would feel amazing. And it looks like this might actually be my best place to build it. Wait, I don't need the Crystal Red and Tor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. Um, well, if I'm thinking about seriously thinking about um, city overlap and making good stuff from that, putting a entertainment district right here would get me a bunch of amenities and the city would build it pretty quick. So I think we'll just pop down the entertainment complex, get those amenities. It'll boost up those other cities. Honestly, that's a key tip that I could probably give most players is use your good cities to help your weak cities. That way you have two pretty damn good cities. Uh, I'm going to chop here and that'll get that harbor halfway finished because that is the goal. And then we can just replant woods if we want. We don't even necessarily have to. It's, it really is just that if we want kind of situation. I'm moving all my boats towards Grand Columbia because my goal is to take him out. Unless my boats are engaged in combat. Otherwise, you know, then they're just sticking around where they are. I'm not going to take this trade deal from Congo because I much prefer to take trade deals that I construct myself. I personally, in my personal experience, the AI does not often offer you very advantageous trade deals. Um, the water park has been completed, giving us an extra amenity from entertainment. Also, it gets an extra amenity from, be from being adjacent to a kelp forest, which I quite like. We are going to go for the Ferris wheel in here for the culture and also the amenities to give us extra boosts, that which will also lead to the aquarium, which will be AOE amenities. So let's, like, let's get that going. Now, in terms of research, we are making our way towards chemistry so that we can get our access to research labs, which will be a massive boost to our science, in particular when we can get uh, Lima up to a higher level. I think I will be focusing on places like, oh, I should put two more envoys into Mitla. This should boost my science. I'm at 262 and now I'm up to 276. So a nice little boost from Mitla. Very, very nice. We did get the breakwater here in Adam. So we're going to go for the boardwalk, which will massively upgrade the adjacent tiles to the waterfront district, giving a plus one culture, plus one faith, and plus one culture, plus one faith, and plus two food if it has a C feature, which will be quite nice. A lumber mill here in Orion Henry, and we'll plant another woods because these are just nice productive tiles, and production is king in Civ, particularly towards the late game. We've already done the majority of the growing that we're going to be doing in the game. Also, we no longer need to produce privateers specifically because we have the ability for all of our naval ships to pillage um, coastal tiles, thanks to the Pirate Court. Very, very handy ability that they've given us. I'm going to go ahead and denounce Grand Columbia because I would like to declare a war. And there is a really nice city over here if I can get a settler over. So in Wesley Clawson, I think I'm going to go ahead and snag a settler, link it with this knight and maybe see if I can move it up to here because there is a really, really cool holy site right there or even potentially, I think, a campus. Depending on where we decide to settle. I mean, the sucky thing is there is no ideal location here. If there was like, if this was a piece of land right there, this would maybe be ideal. It's ironic that the actual best location is where the campus is, is for the city. And that's kind of annoying because that captures all of the luxuries. So I guess I will settle a city there. Although that said, it does have a loyalty issue. So maybe we will just settle on the safer tile over here and just accept a slightly less optimal city. Ooh, being able to snatch this settler would be really nice. I may declare an unjustified war if he moves it out. Yeah, okay, unjustified war is about to come. It's happening, boys. We're stealing another settler this game. Um, first campus with a static adjacency of three or higher has been completed, which is really nice. I'm surprised I've got this far into the game without doing that. We also have access to mobilization, so we can combine three units together if we so wish. We also finished the theater square in Periapatos, which is honestly superfluous at this point in the game now, but I will go ahead and get it because it is a lot of extra culture. When it comes to the campus in Anfer, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves the, yeah, I'm probably going to go ahead and get the library and the navigation school. A lot of my cities are starting to have really, really productive output. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I think we will go for Victor here. Yeah, I think Victor is a reasonable pick. 
just as a governor, I don't really have particularly good governor choices right now. And I figure just getting an extra governor can be handy, even especially if we decide to go to war with someone. We finished the harbor in here. Let's spend our gold. This will get us the Outlaw Cove, which is the replacement for the lighthouse. Then we can use our gold to get the shipyard, bringing the city from 15 production all the way up to 23. And then if I refresh the UI, it'll go up to 27. I'm going to tell the city to focus on food and production. Get yourself another builder. Remember, builders are super, super important. The level of acceleration you can do in your empire with a good lot of builders is insane. And let me tell you, you are almost certainly not building enough builders in your games. I am telling you that right now because you need to go load up all of your save files and queue up a builder in all your cities. I, I, I guarantee you, you are not building enough builders. You are not improving enough tiles because it's so easy to forget them because in previous Civ games, you built like one or two builders and you were good to go. Not so in Civ 6, you need to be pumping out builders. So unfortunately, I will have to declare a surprise war here, which will get me a lot more grievances than I would have liked. It's not the end of the world though. I am getting a settler out of it. And I will also be able to pillage a lot of resources from this war. And additionally, I will be able to damage his economy really heavily in this war, boost my own economy and put myself in a much stronger winning position. OK, let's go ahead and trade with Zug, Zug Didi. We got ourselves another now. I'm going to go ahead and fire that off towards his provinces. And this is probably how I'm going to play out a lot of the late game here is just picking picking different people to pick on, like picking different cities, different civilizations to declare war on and ruin and, and just attack and destroy and pillage and, and, and destroy the day of. That's going to be, you know, mission objective number one. We're going to settle the city in Nubal. Glad for you to join the Empire Nubal. In terms of planning this city, I do think a harbor is pretty key here. I think a harbor right there makes sense to me. We'll put that harbor. I do think a waterfront right here makes sense and then potentially we could do some water parkage. You know, we could fool around with something like this. This doesn't look too bad. We could go full naval in here. And I actually kind of like this setup. I'm going to spend my gold to buy the monument and the granary, which should grow that city just that little bit sooner. And then I'll move on with my time. So it looks like your has been settled here. That's fine. Go ahead and settle this for me. Extract another artifact with an artifact getter. We'll go for a barbarian artifact. More trade deals that I don't particularly want to make. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through those. And again, more trade deals. I think I can get better trade deals if I use this uh, quick deal screen on my own turn. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Getting attacked by barbs, that's to be expected. We did get Kilwa. Now, Kilwa is huge here because it gives you plus three envoys when it's built. And when you're the suzerain of a city state, the city you build Kilwa in gets a 15% boost to the type bonuses provided by that city state. So if you're suzerain of a scientific city state, you'll get 15% extra science in the city that Kilwa is in. Now, if you're suzerain of two or more city states of that type, you get an extra 15% boost that's given to all of your cities, which means if I get suzerainty, of two scientific city states, I get a 15% science boost across my empire on top of a 15% boost in the city that a Kilba is built in. So pretty crazy thing happening here. This is going to put both Lima at 11 envoys and Mitla at six into high priority. In fact, I'm going to pump up Mitla immediately trying to grab that suzerainty. But the same is true for many, many, many. Um, the fact that I'm suzerain of Kalenia and Kumasi means in the city of Noor, like we're making over 500 culture per turn in here and 1,500 gold, which is absolutely insane. So Kilwa has been built in here, which I'm very, very happy about. We could go ahead and finally build a waterfront in here, or we could build some more boats. I think getting the waterfront is a reasonable move at this point in the game. As is potentially building our campus, the city does not yet have a campus and there is a plus two over here. I will go ahead and quickly grab that because the scaling science available to me from the campus is actually pretty darn good. We did manage to get the entertainment complex in Orion Henry. We're going to build the arena for the plus two amenities and then we'll build the zoo for the AOE amenities. The zoo will give plus one amenity to every city within six tiles, which should include all four of these cities. Over in Drov, we have a harbor, we have a waterfront. I think because we're moving in the directions of 
a science victory, we're going to go ahead and prioritize getting things like campuses online because we want that science income. And now that we're also building our relationships with scientific city states, our campuses are more valuable, right? We're going to get more science in our library, in our universities, in our research labs, and then eventually in every single building. We've got a spy established in Hungary. We're going to go ahead and tell him to gain sources. I think I only have one spy as it stands. I really should make more. So I'm going to have to find a city with production that I feel I can take away from. It's probably going to be the capital, honestly. We'll just pop a spy or two into the top of this production tree. Give it a little bit of time. We are going to start coastally raiding. I should plug in the raid card, actually. So let me go ahead and drop. I don't think I'm making builders at the moment, so I can drop that. Instead, I want to plug in total war so that I can get the plus 50% plundering. Uh, let's get to plundering man look at that 50 gold plus 306 uh, we do have a little bit of an issue here in that there's a couple of galleys floating around now we can deal with this without too much difficulty and we're also going to get some fat coastal raids here look at that 306 culture now to be fair we are making over 800 culture per turn so it's not exactly and it's i mean it is an insane amount of culture don't get me wrong but relative to the amount of culture that we're producing on a on a turn by turn basis it's actually not that crazy which is really a testament to how insane our culture per turn is right now. We do have access to ideology, which is gonna give us the ability to produce an additional spy. So we can go up to four spies now, thanks to having the intelligence agency. We can also double the adjacency on our campuses if we so wish. I don't necessarily think that we need to do that. However, gunboat diplomacy could be a good pickup here if I wanted to drop out Visselbanken. And I do think dropping out Visselbanken isn't bad to get gunboat diplomacy here. The open borders allowing me to put Fetorias in all city-states territory. I could also opt here to plug in liberalism for amenities, which I think if I can get some of my cities boosted up to a higher happiness level, might actually be super worth it, especially if I plug in Republican Legacy, because this is 24 amenities basically across my whole empire. And that should be a, a like 12 of my cities just hit maximum happiness, which should be a 10% yield boost across my entire empire. That means basically every 10 turns, I get 11 turns worth of yields now, or rather actually it's a 20% boost. So every five turns, I get six turns of yields, which really like a 20% boost is insane. Imagine if we played a game of Civ, right? If we played a game of Civ, and you got to play for 100 turns, and I got to play 120 turns, think of what you can do with 20 turns. So like amenities have gone from being something that's like, eh, it's kind of okay. Amenities are now insane for scaling your empire. So it's something you should, that's another thing. Amenities, settlers, and builders have become incredibly important for making productive and viable empires. We will put the builder card back in once we have democracy. It says we don't need it right now. And also I think actually a lot of our development has been finished. I'm gonna pause settling for two turns, as long as I remember to pause it, purely because I wanna have, well, I wanna I wanna have five charge builders from these cities. Cause I don't think I don't think three charge builders are worth it. And it because like every time we get a three charge builder, it just makes all of our future builders more expensive. We don't really benefit very much. So we really are just better off in almost every respect to wait. Now what I can do with this ship is to blast the city twice, then coastally pillage and dip over here to do another coastal pillage on the next turn. We are having a little bit of an issue. This city may have to get settled sooner than I would like. And I'm going to retreat my boat to the hope that this boat will be a distraction. And yeah, we're going to we're going to take some damage on some of our ships as we attack Grand Columbia. Now remember, our goal with attack with attacking Grand Columbia isn't actually to take him out. Our goal is to benefit from pillaging his empire. We have claimed a great admiral, Lascarina Bubluina. She is an industrial era great, great admiral. We finished the campus in Athena, so we will go ahead and grab the library. We will grab the navigation school afterwards. We are sitting on an envoy. It wouldn't be bad to be Susan of Cardiff. Um, that extra electricity would be pretty good. I do really want to get uh, Lima on my side. I'm just looking through the list here. Djibouti would be awesome to get control of as well. There's a ton of extra food. I think I will yoink Mexico as a suzerainty because it's plus one diplomatic diplomatic favor per turn. It's also worth era score. And honestly, it's like, it's just, it's just good to have suzerainties. All right, so over here in Pete, I'm going to go ahead and switch the production in the city to the waterfront because I don't want the city to finish the builder while we don't have the builder card plugged in. That would be suboptimal as far as I'm concerned. We have a full 32. We have a full set of 32. Wait, am I at war with Leventa? Can't tell. I don't think you can heal in their territory. No, you can't. Boom. We can wreck this city 
and continue to coastally raid. Oh, there's a blizzard here. That's actually really bad. Can I get this kill? One, two, just about. Coastal raid this. We'll get ourselves 50 gold and a heal. Some of these not super worth it to pillage. It's fine. The goal was to pillage and benefit. All right, we took a pretty decent hit on our privateer, but nothing too crazy has happened, right? I would say this coastal raid that we're doing is basically going to plan. Plus one error score from replaceable parts, which does upgrade our pastures and our farms. We also have democracy now, which is a great, fantastic government type. We're going to go ahead and switch to democracy. Uh, there's a couple of things we definitely want to plug in. New Deal needs to go in, okay? That is... 36 housing and 18 amenities right there. That's absurd. I need to get all of our districts to three special, all of our cities to three specialty districts. We are going to be keeping total war. There's a couple of things that we could justify plugging in. For example, uh, Mercantile Legacy. We could also plug in Vissel Banking to get the insane allied trade routes. We could plug in Triangle the Trade. We could go for Trade Confederation. There's a lot of things we could do here. I think the big thing is commercial hub and harbor district adjacency is going to give us a lot of production natural harbors will eventually probably not be worth having plugged in but until then i mean it's just so good colonial taxes is okay it could eventually be replaced it is handy it does scale pretty well too um, but we're making like three thousand gold per turn which means i should probably start thinking about promoting reina and i need to get reina to contractor so that i can buy a spaceport which is what this tile right here is going to become is a spaceport Multiple spaceports can have a positive impact on the speed that you win. We're going to make our way over to, I want to get social media as well as International Space Agency, but also quite importantly, I want to get containment. This will allow me to basically double the value of my envoys. Once I have containment, I want to go back and look for any and all civics that I have not researched that provide envoys. So for example, we could probably go Cold War into cultural heritage. And I think this is the play. We go Cold War into cultural heritage. We get those three envoys. We head up to professional sports. We head up to space race. We hit social media to get the 5% culture per city state we're suzerain of. And then we hit globalization for the 5% science per city state you're suzerain of. And we really, really hone in on getting control of a lot of city-states, especially now that we have the um, the thing, the Kilwa. Okay, you have a campus, you have a harbor, you have a theater square, you have a waterfront. Probably the only thing that you're justifiably missing is like buildings for those things. Focus on food, focus on production, focus on science. That's gonna be where I want you to put your energy into. I think it's totally acceptable here for me to get another archeological museum. They provide a lot of value. I'm gonna grab a zoo here in Orion Henry for the AOE amenities. We have 15 cities with maximum a maximum happiness. We did not plug in the builder card, so I am just gonna live with the fact that I'm gonna have crappy builders because I had other cards that I think were just simply more important. The builder card will become very important as we move to end the game. Oh, there was a hidden privateer here. Okay. Our goal isn't necessarily to take these cities, but it can be very beneficial when you're in a war to completely obliterate somebody's cities because it makes them more likely to want peace. So that's something I want to keep in your brain. Harbor completed in Mayorn. I'm going to use my insane amount of gold to boost the city, buying a monument, a granary, an outlaw cove, and a shipyard. We're going to take this city from what looks to be about 10 production all the way up to a very, very juicy 23 production. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves the waterfront. Then again, what if I put the waterfront there and the water park there? It's a slightly more optimal setup in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase the monument and the granary in Gumarez, and we will get started on the harbor. We do need to plan the city. Um, we don't actually have particularly good setups here. So I'm gonna do something a little bit unorthodox, but it is gonna focus heavily on coastal infrastructure. And I think I like this setup right here. Harbor, waterfront, arsenal, entertainment district. This way we just have naval domination. Remember, these new cities, their job is just to kind of passively provide a few benefits. They don't need to do a whole lot. Again, we'll do a very, very similar thing. It's, it's, it's a nice setup, right? Harbor, theater square. Oh, actually, you don't benefit from the water park. So yeah, we should just focus on getting the arsenals. The water parks aren't necessary. What do you benefit? Waterfront. City centers, harbors, reefs, and kelp. Okay, seems reasonable. Uh, we are definitely going harbor first and then chopping them out in some of these cities. Fun channel, I will definitely buy myself another builder and look into buying some tiles there here i'm just gonna pop a mine right there pete brennhofer it could use another builder in here go ahead and finish that builder for me my spy 
best used to steal gold. I think we already have a spy in Buddha. Let's put a spy in Los Angeles. That's worth a thousand gold per steal. I know I clicked through that stuff really quickly, but you will have to just kind of trust me. I can read, I can read the screens in Civ like incredibly quickly. Um, and part of it just comes from playing the game so much. And also one of the things I pride myself on is I actually, I play the game really quickly. I'm a fast player compared to a lot of people who play. Okay, so this is kind of a little bit of a complicated setup. I mean, the best place for the waterfront is there. Yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. Honestly, Hungary might be getting a visit from my boat soon um, for being annoying. Uh, okay, we're gonna shoot, shoot you. We got a Ferris wheel here in Stony Baloney. Uh, we're gonna grab the aquarium for the AOE amenities. That is the goal. We have the campus in Andy Fraser. That means we build the library and then we, I wish I could click to queue up the navigation school. This is something that just comes up over and over uh, as you play so much Civ, right? Navigation school completed it in and for Fernie. I think it could be good for us to go ahead and grab the breakwater and the boardwalk in here. I am gonna go ahead and make sure I tell the city to focus on science at some point, this way that it will actually work these campus tiles. We're up to 351 science per turn, which is really, really respectable. I'm gonna grab the breakwater and the boardwalk in here because these are just improving already existing infrastructure, right? I'm building out infrastructure that I've, or I'm, I'm improving infrastructure I've already invested into, which means I'm getting a better return on investment in most cases, right? Or at least in theory, than if I were to just straight up start some other new infrastructure. I think I'm gonna go ahead and swift keel on you. Let's coastally raid this. Apparently this now has an attack range, which is interesting. I'm gonna combine these guys together. That way I get this. Swoop in and shoot Bogo Bogota a couple times. Uh, swing around inside the inner meat of their empire. Pop in here, pillage that. Boom, huge amounts of cash. I'm just gonna go ahead and settle this city. We grab the Diplo favor. Oh man, there's actually a really nice, really nice waterfront right there, plus four. And we'll keep the kelp forest dream alive. Let's go harbor first. Worth a lot to go harbor first, in my opinion. We will chop here in Funchal, so we can get that harbor chopped out nice and quickly. Mabumbi, I think trading with Mabumbi is good, but it might also be better to trade with city-states. Looks like I'm trading with most city-states. So I think trading for gold is actually a perfectly reasonable thing to do here. I'm gonna go ahead and put you inside the city and combine with him just so that I can preserve that unit a little bit better. This builder is gonna go ahead and hit up this forest because that will chop to give you the harbor and then I can replace the forest to get a lumber mill, which will use up all three build charges of that guy. All right, nice. So we're looking into a now, but basically full movement. See if you can't pillage some stuff over here. Library completed in Andy Fraser. Let's get that navigation school. It's worth plus eight science, which is fantastic amounts of science. We've got the harbor in Wesley Clawson. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase the Outlaw Cove. I mean, this city already has insane production somehow. The works tiles in here is crazy. Let's go ahead and buy that shipyard, bring that up to 35 production, then we'll immediately switch into the waterfront. Boom. We can instantaneously finish the lighthouse and shipyard in this city, but I did already just buy them for gold. So that was just a genuine idiot moment. Uh, we'll teleport the guy here. We'll rebuild, we'll chop here. We'll be able to get this harbor up pretty quick. We'll probably even buy some tiles, probably even buy another builder here. Uh, let's extract another artifact. I'll take a Jean artifact. There's that really, really funny, um, great work. Um, it was on the screen for a split second. I genuinely think that my brain has like increased its capacity to process information since I became a Civ player. In particular, when I became a Civ YouTuber. Um, let's pillage this and combine these boats. Get in here, pillage this. Very nice, coastal raiding. Coastal raiding for gold and faith. I think it would be good to buy this fishing tile. And this is where my gold can go now, is just straight into the expansion of my empire. Because I can use my gold to accelerate the cities that I build. Like there's a bunch of fish over here. We can build like a little fishing empire in this area. I really like a city nestled in here. The only thing is we don't have a very good, we don't have a very good waterfront. We have a decent harbor, but the, it's, it's either a good harbor or a good waterfront. And I would like to get both. This has really good fishing boat tiles. I count five fishing boat tiles there. So I'm going to take that. Remember, my fishing boats are insane. So over here, I'm going to grab myself a settler and do that. And remember, I have so much gold that I can inject like a ridiculous amount of productivity into these cities. Gold is the resource you want if you want to have an empire that can settle cities in the late game and bring them up to speed quickly. It would actually be kind of nice if I generated fewer grievances. So I'm going to vote for myself like seven times, six times. I'll vote for myself six times, which feels like a reasonable number. God, adding two more votes basically doubles your investment. So yeah, I'll go for five times a hundred things. It would be nice to get 
great scientists faster. So I'll put a few votes into that. Other than that, I super just don't really actually care what comes out of this. He thinks my troops are really, my troops are merely passing by. Uh, looks like I generate more grievances and great explorers have been blocked. That's honestly fine. We did unlock sanitation. We do have access to sewers. We do have access to the orzegas. We do have access to medics as well as the step well improvement um, being better. Although we don't have the ability to build the step well, so it's kind of moot. You know, I just had an idea. Wouldn't it be really cool? Wouldn't it be really cool if the civilizations that weren't in a game could spawn as city states? Like what if you had like Sumeria spawn as a city state and they gave you like the ability to get access to one of their civilization abilities? It's like they're not in the game, but you can access their kind of their ability kind of. I think that would actually be a really cool mechanic. So in Sylvays, I'm going to go ahead and buy myself a builder because I do have some fishing tiles I want to get online. Let me go ahead and mark out those fishing boats that I want to get. This is just you mark them out so you don't forget. That's that's literally why you do it. In fact, I'm probably going to get two builders in here because there are at least six fishing boats in range of this city worth getting online, which will basically propel this city into being one of the most productive cities in my empire. I will send a spy to Zugdidi, mostly just to steal gold. Mostly I'm just looking to level up my spies so they can defend me later. And I'm going to move all of my traders to Nor. Nor is going to be my trade capital. I'm also going to start looking for alliances and friendships with people. Let's have a look. Um, I like the idea of a research alliance with you, good sir. No yield from second growth. Let's go ahead and build that lumber mill. We'll build another woods over here in Funchal because we want to get more lumber mills. I'm also looking at one, two fish boats. So that's going to tell me to buy a builder over here. Yes, I'm spending a lot of money for three build charges right now. It's fine. I mean, I, I guess technically I could drop natural harbors and maybe, maybe public works extra build charges is more value right now. It's a hard sell, honestly. The nice thing is we are getting kills in here and we're able to just pillage basically at our leisure. All right, go up, buy this, boom. Chop here, boom. Okay, boardwalk is finished here in Adam. We have the waterfront, we have the harbor, we have the campus. I think we could go ahead and pop out a sewer if we wanted to grow the city. Honestly, we're not having trouble growing this city, so it might not even be necessary. But the sewer is the boost for democracy, but we already have democracy, so do we even need to build a sewer? Nah, I mean, it is worth plus two food, and eventually if I do get more relationships with these guys, it is another bit of food. Although... Cattle Hoyuk, I think, is the only naval city-state in the game that I can see. Or the only agrarian city-state that I can see. Sure, let's build the sewer and then we'll see what rolls around when that's finished. Library is completed. Navigation school. Get that science up. We're up to 356 science. Things are coming along nicely. Trade with Leventa. Tons of gold. Tons of culture. Up to 2,000 gold per turn. Currently injecting itself into my coffers on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Which it feels amazing chop the rainforest to get the waterfront finished sooner and then we'll place a lumber mill that we can get better production on this tile as well this builder over here is going to be sent out to start improving fishing boats and i will buy myself another builder this one will be five build charges so there will be some charges left over which is quite a nice thing let's kill some of these units if we can the more of his units that we kill just the better off we are in comparison some of this pillaging i'm going to be real with you is just vindictiveness we get 100 gold from coastal raiding, depending on the ship. And believe me, I am not above. Oh, I should buy a, I should buy a builder up here too, because there are some tiles. Oh, not that button, this button, because there are some tiles in range, at least one, two, three, four, five fishing tiles that are worth getting online. And remember, my fishing tiles are in the lumber mill right there. I'm going to go ahead and buy this tile because I want to chop that tile to finish this harbor. Boom, eight turns left on that. That's amazing. That is huge considering I should be able to insta-buy the harbor buildings. Okay, cultural heritage is finished, which did give us a bunch of envoys. We need to plug, we have, no, no, good, 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 good. what is it we needed it again? It was containment. We're gonna plug in containment over gunboat diplomacy. I am going to keep colonial taxes because it's really, really valuable. Although there is something to be said for getting rid of it to keep gunboat diplomacy. It's fine. We also should be checking envoy quests, like building Biplanes, AT crews, holy sites, Eureka for flight, steel, religious conversion, trade route with Granada, inspiration for class struggle. There's a few different things that we can get here. Um, most importantly is getting control of the scientific city state. So we'll take Mitla under our wing and then we're going to work on Lima. Boom. Uh, we have Lima up to six now. We just need to get up to 11. Mitla is up to nine. We would like to get to 10 with Lima. That'd be ideal. We're going to trade with Mzima. 
Um, Guitarja may actually take a alliance here, and I like the idea of an economic alliance with her. Now, we also have an alliance with Ethiopia, and it would be nice to trade with him. So I'm going to be prioritizing trade routes with Ethiopia over other players, but under city-states. That is for sure because that 7.5 production is excellent and there's also a little bit of sides thrown in there too. All right, let's keep moving traders to the capital because we want to concentrate all of our production into the capital so that we can one turn uh, do all of the science space race projects in a single turn, basically, is, 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 is the plan, is the play. Nice, we capture the quadrivine, we're killing stuff. Move up here, pillage that, pillage this. Oh, look at all those yields, yes, baby. Oh my god, we get them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and buy this tile. We'll slap down a little fishing boat. We're loving it. Three food, two production, and three gold. Buddha, let's siphon funds from Buddha. I've got a bunch of now fleets over here. Uh, make sure we put that lumber mill to improve this city. Now, we did get another builder in here because we need to improve a lot of the fishing tiles. I'm tempted to buy this barb camp too to make it go away. I think we've more or less pillaged most tiles that we can reach reasonably. There's a few left, like this tile here and this campus in here. If I could squeak in there and steal that, it'd be quite good. Speaking of uh, tiles, let's go ahead and buy this tile and buy this tile so that we can place a fishing boat. Look at that. Three food, two production, three gold. That is the kind of tile that will carry the city into the late game. Okay, this is a huge turning point for the game. We're going to be able to build research labs in our cities. That's going to be eight signs when powered. And here's the thing. There is a Cardiff in the game. This is one of the very, very rare instances where Cardiff actually becomes an incredibly powerful city state because Cardiff is going to give us six power in every city, which is more than enough power to run the research lab. I believe it takes three. So we can run the research lab plus another building. Uh, in every city that has a seaport or even just two buildings. We don't even need the seaport. So next phase of the development is going to be moving into the insane science buff of the research lab and looking for the control of Lima, which we are not that far away from getting control of Lima um, because we're doubling our envoys and we might be able to sneak in here and recruit a great artist for gold. Boop getting us an extra two envoys here. So next episode, we're going to take control of Lima. We're going to build our research labs. And I think potentially somewhere in the region of double our science per turn. It might be 1.5 to 2x, but it will be a lot because a lot of these cities have not built their campuses and we can get those up and running very quickly. I am, however, going to go ahead and call that the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.